You, you've mentioned symmetries a lot, and <coughs> in modern physics they play a, play a hugely important role. Could you explore that further? Yeah, if we go back about 300 years or so and before, how did physical science work? People tended to watch things in the world carefully, and they would notice that certain things always followed other things, that there were certain habits, as it were, in, in nature. Certain effects followed certain causes and they gradually keep check of those and then eventually someone like Newton might propose that there was what we call a law that there was a rule that if you did one thing something else would always follow so this was a way of predicting the future from the present and the modern equations of physics are rather like that you set starting conditions you have a mathematical formula that then predicts what will happen in the future but in the 20th century, uh, people started to notice that laws of change uh, usually were equivalent to a statement that something else did not change. So even in the 19th century, people like Kelvin had identified what we call conservation laws, like the conservation of energy, and there's the conservation of angular momentum, and the conservation of mo momentum itself that Newton identified. So these are all statements that something does not change. And remarkably, these rules that <clears throat> if you start at a particular time you can predict the future turn out to be equivalent to statements that something else does not change. And in the case of the ordinary laws of mechanics, the fact that the laws should be the same at every time that you use them or measure them uh, is equivalent to the conservation of energy. And the statement that uh, you should get the same experimental results, you should see the same laws, whatever direction you point your laboratory in, in the universe, is equivalent to the conservation of angular momentum. And the statement that everything should be the same wherever you observe from, different positions, is equivalent to the conservation of momentum. So these invariances, that things be the same when you make various changes, turn out to be equivalent to laws of change. In the 20th century, particle physicists took this on board uh, to a considerable extent, so much so that they thought the symmetries and the invariances were really primary. So instead of finding laws of change that you later on worked out were equivalent to some invariance, you started by looking at the catalogue of all the invariances. And helpfully, pure mathematicians had established that catalogue long before, and it's an area of mathematics known as group theory. Uh, so it tells you the things that you can do that leave things unchanged in some way. So uh, by looking at that collection of patterns and symmetries, you can work out which of them might be appropriate to describe certain sorts of physical interactions. And the law of the weak interaction, the strong interaction governing quarks, these are all based on rather abstract symmetries that come from that catalogue of possible symmetries. Mm -hmm. And this approach has been very successful because <coughs> particles like the famous Higgs boson and previous Z and W bosons, they've been, they were predicted on the basis of these symmetry assumptions and then people looked for them and found them in, in the accelerators. Yes. Yeah, so the way that physics developed was really over the last 300 years as going from more to less. So at the time of before Newton people thought there was some force which kept the planets moving around according to Kepler's laws and there was something else here that kept our feet firmly on the ground and made apples fall towards the earth. But Newton showed that they were one and the same force of gravity. And Maxwell showed that electricity, both static and dynamic, and magnetic forces were just different aspects of the same electromagnetic force. And so this urge to unite things, to reduce the number of forces, has been a dominant approach in 20th century physics. And what you hope is by joining, say, the weak interaction, which governs neutrinos and radioactive forces with electromagnetism, that by joining the different shape pieces together in the jigsaw, you might place some new constraint on the shaping of each piece or require some new type of particle to exist 
that allows both pieces to talk to each other. And that was the case with electro weak unification. So these W and Z particles, three of them, were like heavy versions of the photon. And they mediated the unification between weak forces and electromagnetic forces. And they're predicted to be very heavy, they were predicted to be 100 times or so heavier than the proton. And they were found at CERN uh, long ago now and confirmed this unification into what became known as the weinberg salam theory. So this is what people hope in all these steps of unifying symmetries, one with another within a bigger one, that the unification makes some new prediction that you can use to test whether this is the right step to take.